Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 1 under the topic Nyquist plot. The problem is a unity feedback control system has, this is the given function, draw Nyquist plot and comment on the closed loop stability. So, the first step is, here the transfer function is given, right? Since it is a unity feedback system, so here H of S is not mentioned, right? So, here we are generally representing the transfer function with G of S and H of S. And here the value of H of S is 1 because it is a unity feedback system, right? Now, the first step is we are checking the number of poles which lies on the right hand right hand side of the S plane. So, here you see we all know right the denominator term contributes poles and the numerator term are known as zeros. So here when you equate these terms to zero check whether any pole lies on the right hand side. So here when you, when you equate these terms to zero what happened? Here the value of s will be equal to zero right. When you equate this term that is s plus one equal to zero so s equal to minus one and similarly s plus 2 equal to 0 so here s will be equal to minus 2 right and when you look at this s plane you see one the value of s is 0 so it lies here and another one is minus 1 it lies here and another one is minus 2 it lies here so this is your s plane this is your real axis and this is your imaginary axis so whether any poles are lying on the right hand side no, because all the poles, that is two poles lie on the left hand side and one pole lie at the origin. So, this is the reason here I had mentioned the poles which lies on the right hand side of the S plane is zero, right? Then the next step is N is nothing but number of encirclements. So, number of encirclements is given by the formula P minus Z. P denotes number of poles lying on the right hand side of S plane and similarly Z denotes number of zeros which are lying on the right hand side of the S plane. You see when you look at this problem here all the poles are lying on the left hand side that is one pole at origin and the remaining two on the left hand side and this problem has no zeros you see no numerator terms here. So here now the poles lying on the right half of S plane is zero and again there is no zeros here totally. So, here the value is 0. So, what we are concluding here is the Nyquist plot should not encircle this minus 1 point because here you see number of encirclement is 0, right? While solving the problem further, we should prove that we should find that the Nyquist plot should not encircle minus 1, right? And in step 3, we are going to draw a not a proper uh, Nyquist plot but something right so here again we have to look at the problem right so this is a typical Nyquist plot okay not an accurate plot here just for analyzing we are drawing this diagram so just now we saw right there is a pole at origin so here we have to bypass this origin you see it starts from here since there is a pole at origin we are bypassing this one and here again we are further proceeding and here again we are joining. Okay, this is a basic structure even we can say like that also, right. So, here we are splitting this diagram into different sections. You see, this is your first section and this is your second section and this is your third and finally this is your fourth part, right. And you see, we are assuming this as plus infinity because we don't know the exact values right so here we are considering this as plus infinity and here you see we are naming it as plus zero right and again here this point we are naming it as minus zero because this is your negative imaginary axis and finally here minus j infinity right because the maximum value is we are taking plus infinity and the least value we are taking it as minus infinity and in between since we are having a pole at origin we are bypassing this one so here we are taking another two limits one as plus j0 and another one as minus j0 right then the next step is rationalizing so here 
rationalizing is nothing but from the given problem we are going to frame uh, equations for magnitude and as well as phase angle so here this is our given problem the first step we are replacing s by j omega here then we are going to write expressions for magnitude so how to write expression for magnitude it is nothing but you have to square and you have to take square root for each and every term right so here we are having three terms in the denominator right so when you take here we are doing the same you see i am taking a square root and i am squaring the element here so this square root and square will cancel each other and simply i will be having this omega right and similarly here when you square you see i will be having omega square plus 1 square while considering magnitude you should never consider this j term okay when you square j term then it will give you minus 1 so while considering magnitude you just take the coefficient of imaginary term that's it so here i'll be having square root of omega square plus 1 which can be written as 1 plus omega square and again when you consider this term that is square root of again omega square plus 2 square is 4 right so we had framed expression for magnitude now we are going to phase angle so again for phase angle look at this expression m omega in the denominator contributes an angle of minus 90 degree since omega lies in denominator part here i am including a minus sign if omega is in numerator then simply we can write it as plus 90 right so minus 90 again we are having the remaining two also we are having the terms in denominator so here we are, we are including a minus sign as i am moving these denominator terms to the numerator part right so, minus 90 minus tan inverse of imaginary coefficient is omega and the real term is 1. So, tan inverse of omega by 1 is nothing but tan inverse of omega. And here again, minus tan inverse of omega by 2. Right. So, this is the expression for phase angle. Next, we are going to analyze section wise. So, first we are considering section 1. So, for each and every section, we have to frame a table like this. That is, it should contain a starting point and an ending point. Right. So, we will move back here. Okay, look at this diagram. So, this is your section 1, right? So, what is the starting point of section 1? It is plus infinity. And what is the ending point? It is plus 0, right? So, here, just write down. Here the starting point, the value of omega is infinity and at ending point it is 0, right. Now we are going to substitute these values in magnitude and phase expression and finally we are going to have answers like this, right. So first thing, omega is infinity. When you substitute the value of omega as infinity, what happens? Anything divided by infinity is 0. So here the magnitude is 0. Right. Again, when you substitute omega as infinity in this phase angle expression, what happens? Here, tan inverse of infinity and here again minus tan inverse of infinity. What is the value of tan inverse of infinity? Tan inverse of infinity is nothing but 90 degrees. Right. So, here there is already we are having minus 90 and again this term will become minus 90 and this term will become again minus 90. So, minus 90, minus 90, minus 90 is nothing but minus 270, right. So, here I had written that, right. And the next thing is we are going to substitute the value of omega as plus 0. So, again look at this expression. So, 10 divided by 0, that is anything divided by 0 is nothing but infinity. So, here I had written infinity. Again, when you substitute the value of omega as 0 in this expression, what happens? tan inverse of 0 is 0 and again this tan inverse of 0 will be 0. So, minus 90 minus 0 minus 0 is nothing but minus 90, right. Now, here the thing is you have to move in, move like this way. That is you have to subtract minus 270 degree from this minus 90. That is the thing. So, here minus 90 minus of minus 270. What happens? Minus into minus becomes plus. Right. So, minus 90 plus 270 will give you 
plus 180 degree. What is this plus sign indicates? That is our Nyquist plot should move in anti-clockwise direction. Right. So this is our section 1. Now I will draw and show you. So for section 1, this is the final conclusion. Right. It starts at 0 minus 2, 270 and ends at infinity minus 90 degree. And the rotation is anti-clockwise direction. The angle is plus 180 degree. Right. So here... Just you are having x axis, y axis, mark the angles respectively. When you move in anti clockwise direction, the angles are positive. You see, when you move in clockwise direction, the angles are negative. That's it. Okay, 0 plus 90 plus 180, and again here plus 270. Similarly, when you move in clockwise, you see minus 90, minus 180, and minus 270. Right? So, here, listen carefully. Our starting point is 0 at an angle of minus 270 degree, right? So, here lies this line stands for minus 270 degree. It starts at 0. So, here it is starting at 0 tangential to minus 270 degree, right? Then it should move in anti-clockwise direction and it should cover a rotation of plus 180 degree. So, here you see, so only I had put the arrow mark in anti-clockwise direction and it should cover 180 degree. So each quadrant co coverage gives 90 degree. So it has to cover two quadrants. So you see, so this is your first quadrant and this is your second quadrant, right? And finally, where it has to end at minus 90 degree line, the value is infinity. So where is your minus 90 degree line? Here lies our minus 90 degree line. And here it will meet at infinity somewhere. Right. So wait. So am I making the concept clear? Our starting point is 0 at an angle minus 270 degree. So here is our 0 and here is our minus 270 degree line. So here we are starting. And again. We have to rotate anti-clockwise direction and the angle of rotation that is degree of rotation is 180 degree. So here this gives 90 degree rotation and again when it moves to this, this quadrant this goes under the 90 degree rotation. So totally 180 degree. Where it has to end? It has to end in minus 90 degree line at infinity. So this is my minus 90 degree line right and here it will meet somewhere. So we have drawn our section 1, right? Now we are moving to our section 2. So again, when you look at this rough diagram, this is my section 2, right? So it starts at plus 0 and it ends at minus 0, right? So here you see it starts at plus 0 and it ends at minus 0. Again, from the basic expression, we have to substitute the values and we have to write the terms. So, first we will consider this one. Omega is plus 0. When you substitute the value of omega as plus 0, what happens? Anything divided by 0 is infinity. Right. And again, when you substitute the value of omega as 0, what happens? These two terms become 0 and here we will be having an angle of minus 90 degree. So, 0 minus 90 degree is the answer. Sorry, infinity minus 90 because you are dividing by 0, right? So, infinity minus 90 degree. And again, you consider the ending point. Here, the value of omega is minus 0. So, again, substitute. So, when you substitute the value as minus 0 here, so anything divided by 0 is again infinity. And here in this case, this is a special case which is to be noted. Again, when you substitute plus 0 or minus 0, here again these two terms become 0. But here what happens to this minus 90 degree? This gets modified as plus 90 degree. This is the main thing which is to be noted, right? So here again the magnitude is infinity and the angle is plus 90 degree. So again we have to calculate the angles of rotation. So plus 90 minus of minus 90. So that gives you plus 180 degree. Again since it has a plus sign it should be rotated in anti-clockwise direction. So here the starting point is infinity minus 90. Right. So 
this is my minus 90 degree line and infinity lies some, somewhere here right so i am starting here and here the rotation is plus 180 degree anti clockwise so here you see here we are starting and here i am rotating plus 180 degree that is i have to cover two quadrants in anti clockwise direction so here here plus 90 degree is covered and again while moving here another plus 90 degree is covered so totally 180 degree it is rotated so where it has to end it has to end at plus 90 degree line at infinity you see here it is ending at plus 90 degree line okay and infinity right so here section 2 is over it is clear right that is section 3 is the mirror image of section 1. It is very clear from the diagram. You see this is my section 1 and this is my section 3. That is section 3 is the mirror image right. It is exactly replicating the section 1 here. So, so here we are not solving for section 3 and again for the final section no, no need of analysis right. And we are moving to step 5. So here we are going to find omega PC and the intersection point on the negative real axis. So the first step is we are rationalizing. So this is the given problem and from the problem we have substituted S as J omega. So here rationalizing is nothing but you see here I am having the terms right. Just I am going to multiply and divide by the same term but but with opposite sign that's it you see here i am having j omega so minus j omega here 1 plus j omega 1 minus j omega 2 plus j omega 2 minus j omega right just here we are changing the sign and we are multiplying and dividing by using the same term so that the original term value won't get affected right so here we are doing that the next thing is we are multiplying and simplifying that's it so here we are combining these numerator terms together and here when you multiply what happens you see omega into omega becomes omega square right and j into minus j gives plus 1 right j into j gives minus 1 so minus 1 into minus will give you plus 1 so here plus omega square and similarly here also the same you see here we are having 1 plus j omega and here 1 minus j omega that is in the format of a plus b and here a minus b what is the solution a plus b into a minus b is nothing but a square minus b square right so here in the place of a i am having one and the place of b i am having j omega so when you solve this one here you will be having 1 plus omega square and similarly here 2 plus j omega and 2 minus j omega again in the same format and when you solve you will be having 4 plus omega square right. Here in the next step is we are multiplying the numerator terms right. So here the multiplying terms you see first I am multiplying these two terms. So when you multiply initially you see i am going to multiply with this one so one is multiplied by 2 minus j omega so here 2 minus j omega and next step i am multiplying minus j omega with 2 minus j omega so when you multiply you will be having answer like this right so once you simplify what happens you see minus j omega minus 2j omega so we can add them together right both are with the same sign so this gives you minus j3 omega right so and again finalizing you see again i am multiplying this expression with this minus 10j omega so minus 10j omega into 2 gives you minus 20j omega and again minus 10j omega into minus 3j omega gives you minus 30 omega square and finally minus 10j omega into minus omega square gives you plus j 10 omega cube right and here the denominator terms remain as such so in the next step i am dividing the i am separating the real and imaginary terms so here just i am simplifying the terms you see minus 30 omega square plus j 10 omega cube plus again minus 20 j omega right 
So at omega equal to omega pc, the imaginary part is 0, right? So here, this is the final expression which we had solved. So we are, I am splitting and writing this expression as real and imaginary terms. So here you see, minus 30 omega square divided by this term. These are the real terms, right? So here I am writing this one. And again, imaginary terms are those who have this j term. So I am combining these two terms and here I am writing those terms. 10 omega cube minus 20 omega. And again, denominator term is common for both, right? So here also I am writing the denominator terms. So in this term, I have to equate the imaginary term to 0 in this expression. So this is my imaginary term, right? So just I am equating it to 0. So what happens? So this entire denominator term when move this side, it becomes 0 right and here I, we are having 10 omega cube minus 20 omega so here in this case i am moving this minus 20 omega to the right hand side so after moving this i am solving and finally you see we are having omega square as 20 by 10 which is nothing but 2 here and finally the value of omega is nothing but square root of 2 right once you find out the value of this omega we have, we have to substitute this term in the real part so here the real part is minus 30 omega square by this omega square into 1 plus omega square into 4 plus omega square this is our real term right so just substitute the values here so once you substitute the values you see after substituting and solving here, I am getting the answer as minus 1.66. In other words, we can write it as minus 1.66 plus J0, right? So now we are going to draw the original Nyquist plot. So here lies our original Nyquist plot, right? So what is our analysis of first section? Here we have started, started. And finally, here we have entered, right? This is our section 1. And section 2, we had started from here and we have ended over here. This is our section 2. What we have said, section 3 is nothing but the mirror image of section 1, right? So, this is your section 1. So, the mirror image of this section 1 is nothing but we have to draw like this, right? So, this is your section 1 and this is your section 3, right? And again, you see the direction should be in anti-clockwise. So, we are starting here, we are moving here, and again we are moving, and again we are moving. Right? Finally, we are ending here. So, the direction is anti-clockwise. Right? So, here we have find out the value as minus 1.66. This is nothing but the intersection point on the negative real axis. Right? So, this is your... This is your real axis and this is your negative real axis and here this intersection point is minus 1.66. So what does it indicate whether minus 1 lies within this circle or whether it is lying outside. You see here I am having minus 1.6. So what does it indicate that is minus 1 is lying inside this point right because here it is minus 1.6 right. So here it will be minus 1.5, 1.4, 1.3 and somewhere minus 1 will be lying here. Right. So, here we are calculating the number of encirclements. So, how to calculate the encirclements? It is nothing but just keep a point inside the circle and just draw a line here. Right. So, from this line, uh, in from this line, you just look. You see here we are having two lines which are moving like this. Right. Both are moving in anti-clockwise direction. So, here what this means is the number of encirclement here is plus 2. Right. Am I making the concept clear? To find the number of encirclement, you just draw a line from this point because here is something which is encircled. Right. So, keep a dot and just draw a line here. After drawing the line, you just observe what are all the lines that crosses the drawn line. So, this is our drawn line and here we are having Two, two lines that crosses this drawn line. So, and both the lines are in 
anti clockwise direction right so here n is given by plus 2 since it is in the two lines are in anti clockwise direction if it is in clockwise we have to write it as minus 2 so here finally from this diagram we are concluding that the number of encirclements of the point minus 1 plus 0 j is plus 2 right now we have we have to compare this with our step number 2 what our step number 2 is saying? Our step number 2 is saying that the number of encirclements should be 0. But what happens in our original plot? There we are having encirclement that is 2 encirclement in anti-clockwise direction. Whether these two are matching? No. So number of encirclement is plus 2 but from step 2 the number of encirclement should be 0. So these two are not matching right therefore the system is said to be unstable right. Here comes the end of our problem hope you people understand if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you.